think. Okay, so we are recording. All right, once again, good morning, uh, everybody. Matthew Spaniel here from Aarhus University. Uh, great to have you with us today on this fantastic topic, the application of drones in maritime. Um, I'll be the host of this webinar and uh, we'll have about 45 minutes scheduled uh, to go through this topic. Um, we've got a, a, a great lineup, but first a, a moment from uh, our sponsors. Uh, the Periscope Network is an EU financed project that's looking to accelerate trans-regional innovation in the North Sea region. Um, we've got partners from uh, all over the North Sea region, countries including the UK, Denmark, Norway, Sweden, Netherlands, and Germany. Um, the outline in the agenda for our talk today will be an introduction to the topic by Arjen Udendahl from the Netherlands Maritime Technology. We'll have David Kunkel from RIMS then presenting user cases, followed by Robert Rylander from RISE, Arian and myself will then present some results from an initial survey that we've had on the use of drone in, in maritime applications. We'll then go to a discussion, a panel discussion, uh, that will allow everybody to participate then in the, uh, in the webinar. And then we'll look at future funding opportunities followed by an international consortium building opportunities And then we'll go into questions and answers uh, from the audience. So uh, da, 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 without further ado, um, but before we get started, let me mention this, that we ask that you send over your questions in the chat function. Um, so the chat function, you should see that available uh, in the meantime. There is also an option where you can raise your hand. You should also see this option um, and I'll do my best to get those questions answered and also um, make turn the videos uh, in, the, in the talking, speaking availability over to those who do uh, raise their hand to speak, but probably more will be doing that towards the, uh, towards the second half of the discussion. Um, we are recording this again, so please uh, make note of that. Um, and... We will probably not get to reach uh, all the questions, and if we do not, then we will do our best to make uh, the contact information of our speakers, speakers available uh, to everybody who's participating today. So without further ado, I will then turn it over to Aryan from Netherlands Maritime Technology, who will give us a presentation on this very interesting topic. Uh, Matt, yes. um, just as a short introduction to this uh, this topic, um, when we in our Periscope group were discussing uh, what are the business opportunities uh, for the future, quite often robotics and the use of drone in the maritime uh, uh, domain, maritime sector was mentioned. And, uh, and every week you read something or you learn something about use of robotics of drones in the maritime uh, industry whether it is uh, in the uh, smart maintenance or whether it is in production or whether it is for uh, operation. And uh, so that was the, the idea there to, to, to find out what is the market and, uh, and what at the moment is hampering to, to, uh, to get a big start, to make this a real mature market. So within the group now, we are thinking of bringing more people together who are interested in this topic, interested in the use of robotics and drones in the maritime industry, see whether we can create a small ecosystem of companies who uh, are interested in a subject and to see how can we accelerate. Um, is that by sharing knowledge? Is it by join, joining uh, in, uh, in workshops? Is that by uh, going into projects? But uh, a lot of people are interested to make this, uh, this faster and this, and this making a, a serious market for the future. A lot of companies are interested and, uh, and quite often we see that the companies who are interested, they are looking into their uh, own environment in their own country. 
And maybe the solution is not in your own country, but in one of the other countries around the North Sea. And we see similar projects in uh, the countries around the North Sea. So the objective is to, to share information and to see how can we accelerate in um, so we want to learn uh, about about um, uh, projects, about initiatives, and we have uh, we have two presentations on the subject. Um, but uh, you see great things in uh, in the news, like last month uh, the Danish authorities are using a drone now for um, uh, inspecting the ships to to test the uh, the exhaust gases on the the sulfur content. Uh, last week, I learned from the Netherlands that the search and rescue teams will use drones to identify kite surfers who are in need of help. They will, they will put up the drones and to see where they can find the people uh, in the sea. Um, every time we see this, we learn this kind of examples. But now the question is, how can we, how can we grow fast so this will become a real good market for the maritime industry for, uh, for the future? I have uh, David Knuckle uh, next to me. And uh, he will give uh, a an, um, an, uh, presentation on one of the user cases, which is, uh, he started uh, a couple of years ago. And, uh, and we will also hear from him, uh, what is the present situation and what do we need to, um, to make big steps in the future with the use of, uh, of drones? We will try to, uh, to start the presentation uh, now, we'll see if that's working. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Matt, can you see the presentation? Is it showing? Looking good. Okay. Okay. Thanks, Arjen, Matt, uh, for the introduction. Uh, my name is David Knuckel. Um, I've been at sea for uh, uh, 11 years and uh, started to write uh, uh, maintenance schedules and in 2015 the intention was uh, to uh, let us uh, say raise the maintenance uh, up to uh, the next level um, we started to scout and try to find a solution for inspection of uh, enclosed spaces and um, well I tell you during this presentation a little bit about uh, the, the let's say the uh, methodologies of what we're how, how it's done in a traditional way I'll explain a little bit of how we are how what we are doing and what the pros and the cons are um, and I will also give you a little glance in the future uh, regarding new hardware and software technology we're focusing on uh, regarding uh, drone inspections um, well, these are the traditional methods which are still used. Uh, we build a lot of scaffolding and uh, we do the inspections. Uh, in some cases, we also do other work, of course, um, like thickness measurements. Uh, but uh, as you can see, in many cases, the whole ship is, is built with scaffolding. Um, inspections with uh, rafting on the, on the top right and also scaffolding in the holds. Well, for those who have our ship managing ships, it's not new. Uh, everyone is familiar with that, but uh, it's still happening. And it's a very uh, resource intensive and expensive uh, uh, methodology um, and not uh, always uh, uh, safe as well. This is what we do now. Uh, we use drones for the inner inspections uh, of holds, uh, cargo holds, uh, uh, ballast tanks, but we also inspect the uh, oil rigs from the outside. Uh, with uh, with the drones, uh, which you can see on the on the left side, we also inspect uh, uh, windmill vessels like uh, the pillars. We've been in in, in a couple of pillars, um, which is uh, which is uh, very uh, dangerous and uh, difficult to access. Um, but we do it in a very quick way, and I think we've done a pillar within uh, let's say. Uh, an hour and then uh, we have seen everything and recorded uh, on the drone. Well, the pros of, uh, of drone inspections is of course that uh, there is the, no, the enclosed space entries is not required anymore. Uh, in many cases we can just open up the manhole and we just uh, put the drone in. 
of course, we have to do some preparations, not to get lost in the tank. Um, but uh, this is more covered by a working procedure. Uh, we're not working on heights anymore. Um, we've done uh, uh, inspections of cargo holds of large uh, ore tankers uh, during surveys. Um, each cargo took us about an hour and uh, without, let's say, any, uh, any scaffolding at all. Uh, and also, of course, the, the, the risk of building the scaffolding uh, is, not, is not there anymore as well. Uh, everyone underestimates that, but uh, building scaffolding and removal of the scaffolding is a, takes a certain risk as well. Um, it's cheaper. Uh, this is a rough calculation. It takes a company approximately 21 days to build a, an entire vessel full of scaffolding. Costs 256 k um, and we can do it in seven days with two pilots in one drone. Um, this is including the tanks. Last time we did a build carrier uh, and only the cargo holds, nine cargo holds, and it took us about 10 hours um, to complete the entire inspection of the corrugation, the brackets, and the, and the, the, the hatch cover beams uh, during an uh, intermediate survey. There are some disadvantages, just because the technology is not there yet. Uh, we can't do any NDT measurements. Um, there are drones which actually can do NDT measurements, but uh, it's still on a perfect surface. So um, uh, the, the surface needs to be prepared, and especially in tanks and on heights, uh, this is still not possible. Um, ATEX certification. Uh, there is one uh, company claims that there is a drone uh, ready and certified for Zona 2 but this is not the area where we want to fly. I mean, we want to fly in zone one and zero. So uh, the old vessels, which are in an enhanced survey program, in some cases they are excluded because uh, the, the, the condition of the vessel is, is so bad that, uh, well, you know that there is additional work uh, coming up anyway. So um, then it doesn't make sense to, to use the drone uh, for the outdoor flights, um, it's more regulated uh, and you need uh, additional licenses uh, and, and therefore partnerships are required because although you think uh, drone uh, uh, licenses are universal, this is not the case and it depends on country by country uh, which license you need. Um, but for example, for, for uh, Holland, we work uh, with a partner. In Singapore, we have a, a, a permission to fly in and outdoor obtaining the operator permit. Well, these are some references lists. We did some ballast tanks, uh, jack-up vessels, uh, four and a half peaks of a tanker. Uh, we did some barges. Uh, we have uh, uh, the ballast tank of a uh, discharging stone bill carrier and uh, the holds of a large uh, ore bill carrier, which is inspected in, uh, in 10 hours. We're the first company which is, has actually all the class approved uh, uh, approvals of uh, the class. Um, Bureau Veritas was the first, and then we went to uh, DVGL, ABS, RENA, KRS, Class and K, Lloyds, and uh, IR Class. Um, we are the only company at this stage which have all the class approvals. Um, which makes us unique in the, in the company, but uh, it's it's definitely required in the maritime industry to become an uh, uh, approved service supplier, similar like a, a diving survey. We're not a surveyor in itself, so uh, the, the surveyor will always join us, um, but we bring the, the eyes of the surveyor or the inspector to the particular place in the tank or the, or the cargo hold. A little uh, a roadmap. Uh, regarding the new hardware technology, um, we would like to have the drones autonomously um, because now with the, uh, the quality also depends on the, on the, the quality of the pilot. Uh, they're hard to find and also hard to train. So, um, and we would like to have uh, a relation between the images and the position of the drone, which is now still in the head of the pilot. Um, we would like to have sensor technology to carry out thickness measurements eventually because that is one of the major we still need to cover. 
um, ATEX requirements. Um, that also takes uh, some time because it is, uh, it is uh, very difficult to get a drone uh, ATEX certified. Um, we need a solution for water and mud in the tank. Um, and um, we would like to, let's say, uh, find some additional tools to find the deformation of tanks. Sometimes they're hard to, to discover. Um, I'm not saying impossible, but uh, it would be nice if that could be done with uh, 3D uh, uh, measurements. Uh, and the thickness measurements, of course, which I already mentioned. Just to give you an example of the autonomous technology and how far uh, the industry already is. Um, in the left or on the right, you see the drone in the bottom. There is no pilot involved anymore. Um, and on the top, you see what uh, the camera is seeing at that cage. And um, in, let's say, the colored area, the drone is, uh, is, is finding its own path. So there is no uh, pilot involved anymore. But in this case, you can also see that there is a relation between the uh, position of the drone and the uh, images and the movie that the drone is making. And the drone just continues flying until uh, it's programmed to come back because the battery is finished or until he has covered uh, the entire space. Of course, the next step would also be that we now go for new software technology, uh, uh, for example, data processing and image recognition. Um, the software in itself already exists, uh, we don't have to invent that anymore. The question is only, of the, the chance is only that we need to learn uh, the software, what is right and wrong, and therefore you still need to have some, uh, some skills um, to do that and to uh, program this, the software in such a way that the accuracy goes up uh, very fast. Um, but in general, the technology in itself already exists. Eventually, no one goes going to watch uh, six hours of movie anymore, uh, especially not the surveyor, because he makes a judgment on site. But uh, if ship owners want to have a look at it as well, then uh, I mean, we're only interested in what is wrong and not what, in what is right. Well, as you just to wrap up, uh, you can see the traditional methodologies are changing and there is new technology already available and uh, the future developments never stop and uh, we're very interested in uh, what your view will be in the, in the in, in, let's say, the next roadmap ahead. Thanks a lot. I'll stop sharing again. Okay, Matt, yeah, it's up great. to you again. <laughs> Thank you very much. Extremely interesting. That was uh, a fantastic, and it, it it uh, it's really a glimpse to see. Oh, wow, how far we've we've already come with with all these uh, technologies, um, and looking forward to hearing from from everybody else in the webinar later on about uh, questions for David. But in the meantime, let's move it over to Robert. Robert, are you ready with your presentation, Robert from Rise in Sweden? I think so. Uh, good morning, everyone. Let's see if it's technology is with me. I open up a back channel. So I will yeah. shut that one down. It's, it seems to be working. Am I echoing as well? No, looks good. It looks good from our yeah. side. Yeah. Excellent. Well, I have a little bit uh, of a, a wider perspective. Uh, Thank you for a very uh, detailed and very good presentation. I was uh, maybe I was nodding all the way, <laughs> just uh, agreeing. Um, uh, and uh, by chance, I didn't know that, but you were also mentioned in my presentation. Uh, the drone's perspective to me is wide. It's uh, like the traditional AUVs, ROVs, also. But I'm not going to go too deep in those, but what's interesting is that uh, these uh, traditional drones are also put the, to the, uh, really to the edge nowadays. Uh, the, the price is still high, but uh, uh, the gains of using these ones are so high. Uh, this one is uh, one that was sent uh, underneath the ice shelf in the Arctic and uh, <laughs> almost like a 
uh, jeopardize mission. It, they hoped it would come back and surface in an ice-free area after its uh, venture, and it did. So they, they had to send it back in again, uh, where no one had gone before. But maybe the military, of course, but uh, they didn't collect the types of data that uh, the researchers needed. So. Uh, the, the price is going down, the sensors, the quality of the sensor is uh, going rapidly up and we will see traditional uh, uh, ROVs like this one for hull inspection uh, will probably also become more uh, uh, familiar or uh, on the market and they will also uh, also come down in price, removing maybe the diver uh, even more. Uh, we have seen it already in the oil and gas industry where I was a nautical officer. We were using ROVs for uh, much more work uh, every day that uh, removed the divers from the seabed. Yeah. And what, what is interesting though is that it, in the oil and gas industry, it's actually uh, reshaping how they design the templates. So the ROVs, uh, AUVs, and etc. can go into the templates and do the job uh, without the diver. So maybe there's a trend for the shipping industry as well that we have to do this uh, the hull of the ship and the infrastructure around the ship available for uh, drones in different kinds and shapes. Uh, here's Rims. Uh, you you have been on my radar for a while. Uh, you, I follow your progress. Uh, and uh, I just say um, I take my hat off to your congratulations to your adding <laughs> the classification societies one by one, and that's fantastic. And I think that's the future. Um, but I think this is one of the key things that need to come in place. Uh, it's the classifications. It's the approval of, uh, around this, and uh, so we have it for drones. And it's even uh, on this high level, we have a permission now, an organized way to fly these drones. Uh, maybe not as free as every drone operator wants, but uh, at least uh, we have a common uh, work field for this in the European Union. And that is something we lack in the other drones, I think. And still, if we want to go autonomous and we want to go out of line of sight and we are not inside a, a ship, uh, there are some challenges. Uh, without go fly without a line of sight uh, still uh, needs paperwork and uh, to to do the the real societal uh, gains. We need to sort that one out and this is an example where the Swedish uh, search and rescue society they want to have uh, drones posted in uh, the small ports where they have a lot of pressure crafts and they want to be able to launch them remotely and uh, fly them remotely out of line of sight so they can get an uh, eye on the site extremely fast and then the rescue boat uh, is steaming or the uh, water jet is steaming, steaming towards the incident site and uh, they know much more what's going on on the, on the water before they arrive there. Uh, here's another project where we uh, in RICE are involved. It's uh, autonomous. It's the challenge to do this inspection autonomously on an airfield. It's uh, about the runway and it's about the fence, the perimeters. And yes, we do that manually, we fly them, etc., etc. but uh, the challenge is autonomously and it has to be all year, all weather, and that's also a challenge. So, bigger things. This is a fantastic trend. I think uh, this is also for me a drone, even if it's a cargo ship or uh, something like that. Uh, it can be unmanned in the future, but in the for time now, we will see manned systems uh, for a longer period, but maybe in a short while we will see downsize on manning. Uh, this might do some more sophisticated work, uh, dredging, etc., etc., without uh, personnel on board. We see some experimental harbor tug operations, etc., uh, at, at the moment. This one is also a drone to me. It will be manned in the beginning. What's interesting here is also that they have the port interface will also be 
even higher automated and we see some terminals already around the world that are automated or uh, almost autonomous operated. So that's also drones for me, the vessel, the crane, the straddle uh, carrier, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, it's also kinds of drone and this is a whole ecosystem that is building up around the shipping industry. And in Gothenburg, there's a project where they want to have uh, test uh, even hinterland transportation with the uh, drones, with the containers loaded on a lorry, and the lorry goes kind of autonomously all the way into Boros, which is uh, like a, is it a 10, 100 kilometers ride almost, uh, and to a terminal in Boros. So uh, there's a lot of things going on. And even for the bigger drones, this is the interesting part. We have it for the flying drones, but in the maritime sector and the bigger drones, this is still uh, experimental, but things are moving. This is from the IMO uh, Maritime Safety Committee meeting 101, where uh, Swedish transportation agencies is only responsible for the scoping activity, but at least it's on the agenda. And you can see who are uh, the forerunners in this, it's uh, Finland, Japan, Norway, and South Korea. And um, so they're moving ahead. Uh, and I think we will see some, I think we will see this moving much faster towards us than other parts of the maritime industry thinks. So the, the good thing about this is this, it's the same or very similar uh, technology. Uh, that are all used in the same here, uh, but they have some different challenges, and especially for the maritime sector where it has to be all weather all year, uh, and you can't really stop it. So I think the weather is also a very challenging thing that we need to sort out in the future, but we will do it. Uh, even the ports, uh, as I said, some terminals are already automated, uh, but this is something we will see in a much, much more wider context. Uh, and I think it's uh, interesting. Uh, so there's a big ecosystem around this that comes into place uh, and it, it moves really, really fast. This was not on the agenda five years ago. It was not on the agenda maybe three years ago, but today it's, it's pushed forward. And I think uh, there's a lot of things we could do here uh, to compete and increase the efficiency, especially if we're looking towards um, uh, increasing the efficiency in, in Europe compared to, for example, China. So automation is something that we really need to do everywhere. And I'm gonna stop there. So here's a short list of my references and we, I will looking forward to the discussion a little bit later. Excellent, Robert. Thank you so very much uh, for that tour around autonomous and drones inside Maritime. It was uh, absolutely fantastic. Wow, so much happening. Uh, let me uh, move to Arian. Arian, some some slides or some insights that we're getting from from Periscope are next up on the agenda, right? Uh, so, what's going on here? Yeah. Hold on, I will, let me see. Uh, I think the presentation uh, uh, webinar, the panels, uh, this understanding. Yes, thank you. No, you don't need uh, Let me see, I had some slides somewhere on the survey. Uh, slides. Can I close the survey? No. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah so. Let me see if it is this one. Yeah. Okay, it's there. <coughs> um, as from a periscope group, we um, we issued a survey. We will do that on um, several topics, which the group think that would be an interesting market for the future. So, um, Arian, Arian, just a moment. I'm having a problem seeing your screen. Is anybody else having a problem seeing Arian's screen right now? It says that you've started the screen sharing. Judith, this is Judith here. I'm also having a problem seeing the screen. I just, 
Marion and David have, have started screen sharing. Yeah, that's what I'm seeing too. Stop sharing. Yes, the screen, screen sharing is paused. Yeah. We'll do it again. We try it again. Uh, slideshows. Yeah. Misschien weer van het begin. En dan. Oh ja. Die jongens, ja. Ik bedoel het goed is. Ja. You can see it? No, Robert is... Is Judith here? No, we cannot. It's just blank. It's just black. Black. Stop. Well, it says you've started screen sharing, but there's nothing behind it. Okay, well, then we do it uh, um, verbally. Yep, Arian, I think I also might even have a backup copy of your slides. Let me see if I can uh, okay. pull, pull it up here real quick. Not sure why it is not. All right. You guys see my screen now. Yeah, yeah, I see your screen. I can't get into the slideshow. Oh, there we go. There we go. It's a periscope. So uh, I don't know <laughs> the order of your slides, Arian, but I'm controlling your sli your slides from my computer now. Um, okay. Well, yeah, because it, it's um, the the slides about the survey. Okay. Let's see here. Let me see. Let me see. Would it be would it be this one? Would it be this one? Uh, well, telling about the subject is that um, uh, with, with a group of uh, people working in the Periscope, where we are identifying the uh, the opportunities. We say, okay, this is something we think about, but uh, but what is the market thinking? And uh, so the Aarhus University uh, issued a, uh, a a small survey, basically with only a few questions, uh, which allow the maritime professionals to give their opinion in just a few minutes. And basically, the uh, the opinion, the questions were, uh, do you do you what is your opinion about uh, the market for this particular product? And when do you think that this will uh, will happen? And we issued uh, the survey, and also people were um, had the possibility to uh, uh, put comments. And this is this is what the uh, the comments we got from the uh, from the people about this uh, technology. And we asked explicitly about uh, uh, the use of drones in enclosed uh, spaces. And uh, yeah, and we see for uh, for market uh, pot potential you see well that, that like mentioned the technology already exists um, uh, and, and there is an immense growth of the drone industry so how can you make with the technology of today into the service of the of the future and uh, 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 yeah, um, also one of the uh, disadvantages was a technology that said there is technology is available but it is fragmented in the industry it's scattered around so is it possible that we think then is it possible to make an acceleration by uh, uh, fighting against this fragmentation of knowledge and bring it all to, uh, together? And also uh, an issue is, uh, is finance. And uh, I will come back that to the end, but finance is a bottleneck. How can you um, activate investors in this technology so that they um, really see it as a future uh, business module? Um, because um, uh, it's, uh, the business module in the beginning is not so easy, and only when you start with scale up, then it gets more um, uh, more economical. Uh, Matt, do you also have this in here the, 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 res the results of the two questions? Is this? Huh? Yeah, it says about timing. Um, people, uh, it was between. 2020 and 2025, which was the mean. And uh, that means that at least the maritime professionals who are filling in the questionnaire, the survey, they really think it's, uh, it's something on the medium term. So it's, it's there around the coin, not something which is um, uh, science or future for 2030. It's, it's really 
already in the beginning of the next uh, decade. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I would add to that, but this one's particularly referencing the drone inspection of enclosed spaces. Yeah. Right. So each of these uh, each of these surveys are then taking a very uh, focused view on um, a number of these different topics. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So that I believe will conclude the planned content side of this uh, web seminar. And so now I'm going to stop sharing my screen so I can see what's going on in the in the dashboard and unmute everybody. And we also have the chat function. I'll write the chat function is, is here. So you can see that uh, you can see that that's where, if you do have uh, questions and would like to type them in, you can go ahead and send them in, in there. So, um, but would like to open it up for discussion from the participants in the webinar. So if there's any questions, uh, out there and I'm doing my best to keep an eye out to see if I can see hands being raised because then I can unmute the people with their hands being raised if they cannot um, unmute themselves all right let's see and let's see Okay. I think Matt, when, when you are already looking for this, uh, mm -hmm. one thing what strikes me now already is that uh, we are almost we, most of the time we are focused on the technology and um, and all the uh, the application, but uh, I hear also things like. Uh, uh, a license to operate, which is different in every country. Uh, the EU, which is busy with regulation. The uh, the IMO, which is busy with uh, what Robert was sharing with, with regulation. That means that what, what everybody will have in common is everything about uh, legislation. Mm. Um, so, uh, so I think this is already a topic, I think, that if we could share this and if we could learn from each other, that would give a benefit. and. Uh, because, because otherwise everybody needs to follow exactly what's going on in, in all these fields on legislation. So if we would, if we would one way, if you would find something that is easier accessible for everybody who's interested in it, somebody who's following it and uh, giving leads, picking up the messages from the business and try to bring it back to the regulators, I think that was already uh, the developments in this area because that, what I can see, I was not aware what Robert was sharing about an IMO or draft proposal for, and there was an, a notice in April uh, issued. Um, and there will be more things also within the EU. So that would be, I think, very useful if, we, uh, if one way or the other that would be easy, accessible for everybody who is working with the drones. I, I think um, that's really the, the nail that we had to <laughs> hammer in. Because I think without uh, clear guidance or regulations, or it will be very hard to bring money into the market because they are very skeptical, I think, to finance projects when they don't know the legal status or uh, the jurisdiction around uh, these kinds of operations. Yeah. It's too experimental at the moment for them, the money, so to say, I guess. Yeah. Not to us. <laughs> yeah. Oh, we have a question, I think. Hmm. They're also taking the protecting ships and flying drones. Yeah, I guess flying your own drone within an ISPS area will be complicated <laughs> if you're outside the hull. <laughs> I don't oh, mind questions if um, if it's okay um, because uh, um, before you actually enter the premises of uh, let's say a, a company or a ship you've actually already done go through some risk assessments I mean a lot of companies uh, uh, do want to see uh, that you are well uh, that you have made all the risk assessments 
and that uh, you have all the permissions uh, to, to come on board, uh, to come on the yard, uh, uh, and uh, to do, let's say, all the safety management uh, uh, work that is required before you actually enter the premises. I think uh, regarding the uh, the safety, I mean, um, yeah. <clears throat> it is it is a, uh, in many countries it is allowed to fly just fly around, um, but in many countries it's also heavily regulated. And um, um, if you're flying uh, without any permission uh, and uh, they'll catch you, then you you get the chance of a fine. So. Um, but yes, I mean, there is a certain risk. I mean, everyone can fly a, uh, a drone, and, uh, but everyone can also drive a car. And there is also a certain risk element in that. So, um, but as long as we keep responsible to, uh, and keep it re regulated, and I think that is the, the way to go forward, then, uh, then things go out fine. Does it answer the question? Um. Uh, good morning. Uh, my name is uh, Stefan. I'm from uh, Arab. We're based in the, in the Netherlands. Um, with regards to regulation, uh, we are specialized in the in the new uh, EU leg legislation that's coming up, um, and we are working on a digital tool to. Um, uh, ease the uh, process of doing a risk assessment in accordance with the new legislation. Um, so that's maybe that's uh, something that could be uh, could be interesting for the participants in this uh, in this webinar. Yeah. yeah, yeah, interesting. Yeah, yeah. I think it's good to uh, to to make a split in the the different regulations. Um, you have regulations regarding let's say the permissions to fly yeah? and that is the regulation you you most probably you have your tools as well yeah correct uh, um the 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 class certification that uh, that uh, rims has is more related to let's say a a quality standard so um uh, it's also regulated that uh, that not every drone operator can uh, can just uh, support the surveyor you need to have a system in place, which obviously you have in place when you have the permission to fly. So, uh, but then you also need to have the skills. And one of the class requirements is, is that you also need to know something about shipping. And if the surveyor is asking you to fly to the builds and you're going upwards, then it's going to be a long, uh, a long flight. So, um, and that, but it, that the, the class certification and regulation is more related to the quality of the inspection. And I think it's good to split. The discussion in in two uh, and inform let's say uh, all parties regarding both yeah. yeah yeah that's correct that's what we see as well because if you look at the new legislation there's a lot of uh, it's really aviation focused and focused on drones so we make uh, exemptions as, as well for the dutch government um, and what we see now for example we're working on a uh, what we call standard scenario for working offshore in the uh, North Sea area, Amsterdam, um, there uh, there is the clear combination of aviation regulation in combination with uh, requirements from uh, operators from the rig. So let's say Shell or uh, uh, BP, that that kind of uh, companies. Okay, Stefan, what is the name of your company? Uh, Airhub. Airhub. Yeah. Okay. Can, if you, you want some information, you can just send me an email, uh, yeah. stefan at airhub.nl. Yeah, okay. Um, Matt, maybe also for the, for the time? Because um, we're close to 45 minutes. Shall I go to the, to the part of the funding? That's right. So I think we are already over time by about a minute. Thank you for, for staying with us. But Arjen, yes, let's try to wrap this up. Um, yeah. I have one more slide. Uh, 
Now maybe otherwise. Yeah. 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 Okay. There it is. We we'll see if you can. This is only one slide. I'm not sure if you can see this one. Unfortunately, I cannot see this one again. We're having a. Uh, it's the same. The same with me. I can't see it. Uh, maybe maybe it's because the other one is still open and not. <laughs> um, okay, but just to to share with you that um, um, we learned that. Uh, from draft papers from the European Union that uh, a new call is coming up. It's called ICT-09-2020, which is robotics in applied areas. And that is for robotics for infrastructure and maintenance, uh, smart inspection and maintenance, especially also on, uh, on infrastructure. And that call will come up uh, and it will be most likely firm in October. Um, and I think it should be issued uh, in January, I think, uh, Judith. Um, and that's, um, and uh, the, the European Commission, they recognize that um, with, the, with the robotics in, uh, in uh, application areas, you will face new technical and non-technical challenges. And the call is there to reduce the barriers that prevent a more widespread adoption of robotics. And, uh, and our focus could be on inspection and maintenance of infrastructure. And it's not only about the technical part, it's also included. And what, you must have a demonstration uh, of the uh, techniques and of the, um, of the drones, but also to raise awareness and make sure that it's better taken up by the citizens and the business. And, uh, and that could also, just, could also cover issues like legal and regulation, ethical, cybersecurity, uh, business modules, connections to big data, uh, and Internet of Things. And we were wondering whether it would be interesting to, uh, to team up with a group of companies and see if it would be interesting to, uh, to make a, uh, a, uh, a paper and to go for, uh, for the call. The total budget is, uh, uh, is, uh, is 7 to 9 million of this call. And, um, and it says it should uh, engage, engage the relevant industry stakeholders, including uh, SMEs. And our plan is to um, uh, definitely, we, we, will, we will share the information we have with, uh, with this group and also with the people who entered into the survey. Uh, and they, they have left their email address. Um, and our intention is to organize a, uh, a workshop uh, uh, first week of September in Rotterdam and to invite uh, companies also invite uh, ship owners and uh, ship and uh, shipyards uh, and also uh, from the business from drones and robotics and to have a workshop and to see what are the challenges we are facing and uh, would it be worthwhile to to form a group um, and to see if we can make a project um, out of it funded by the European Union to see whether we can uh, slash these barriers and to see whether we can have a, uh, uh, to stimulate a more widespread use of uh, drones and uh, uh, robotics. So this is one what we will do as a uh, follow-up. That sounds, that sounds uh, viable and looking forward to uh, hearing from the rest of the group uh, as as we go forward to, through the summer, um, before then, though, I would uh, then like to wish everybody a, a good summer, and uh, thank you for joining us today in in this webinar, and uh, we'd like to publish this webinar online. So please uh, reach out to me if you've got any concerns uh, before going forward with that. But again, thank you everybody for participating, especially to our speakers, David and Robert, um, and Arian for, for your skillful uh, annotation of what's going on in the, in this, in the sector. And uh, uh, on behalf of Aarhus University Periscope Project, uh, I wish everybody a wonderful day and a uh, good summer. Thank you, Matt. Thanks. Thank you very much. Have a good summer. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.